Hi, uh, welcome to lecture two. Uh, in this lecture we're going to develop a system model of how evolution takes place. And we're going to do that by uh, tagging on to the structure, that the system model that we build, the key equations that are involved uh, in the mathematics of evolution. Again, let me uh, assure you that I'm not going to get too mathematical in this, but I'll give you um, a glimpse of uh, those equations, uh, explain them, and that will really help the understanding as we get further into the discussion of things that we could only understand and appreciate by being able to develop mathematics into the model of evolution. Well, what are the key ideas of uh, Darwin? Well, there were five basic principles, and they become very well known by uh, people who follow science. And these five principles that completely encapsulate the verbal model of uh, of Darwin's is first the idea of populations and population growth and secondly the struggle for existence that occurs within that population uh, particularly because resources are limited this goes back to the work that Malthus did in the field of economics and so influenced Darwin's thinking within a species uh, Darwin expressed uh, the very strong idea that there was variation in those competing individuals and that the survival of individuals was based on um, how successful these individuals were in the pattern of variation that they have and this is of course known as survival of the fittest. Darwin didn't know of uh, Mendel's work in genetics but he did appreciate the basic concepts of heredity which is that a surviving individual will have offspring uh, that share common characteristics with its parents that like begets like uh, with of course a, a tad of genetic mixing added. Now let's try to build up the mathematical model of um, evolution and we're going to start with a, a discussion of the the ideas of how populations grow. Well this is probably an idea that uh, is uh, understandable to anybody because Population grows in the same way as, uh, as our bank accounts hopefully grow, uh, by a, a compounding interest. The population in the next generation is equal to the population in the present generation, uh, plus the rate of growth times the population in the present generation. So uh, this accumulating population goes uh, on replicating itself in, a, in a generation after generation. This kind of equation which shows how things are now and how things are in one increment in time and in the future is called the difference uh, equation. Uh, this sort of difference equation with uh, uh, compound growth essentially leads to uh, an exponential function. And over the generations we see this exponential curve. As a matter of fact, uh, the human species uh, has gone from um, a, a base level of around half a billion um, individuals to today where we have six billion uh, individuals following essentially an exponential curve. Well this can't go on indefinitely and uh, it's um, a limit that, that becomes imposed on population growth that really creates the struggle for existence because the individuals to survive have got to get their share of the resources. There is nothing in this world including a human uh, existence that has endless resource. The equation that describes uh, growth under a constrained resource environment is called the logistic equation. It's absolutely identical to the previous growth equation that we saw except that the rate of growth is contained as you get closer and closer to a growth a limit, a limit of how many in a population are sustainable by the resources. And uh, you can see in the area in yellow that's the term that as you get closer and closer to the um, number K, the population limit, the growth rate falls off and as a matter of fact can actually go negative. 
this um, logistic growth curve uh, leads to this particular kind of a uh, function. Uh, it starts where, when uh, populations are low with exactly the kind of exponential growth uh, that we saw uh, in the first equation. But as you get closer and closer to the resource limit, uh, the exponential growth tapers off and flattens. And the big question that comes into existence then is, if the population is going to be contained in this way, who are going to be the lucky individuals uh, who will survive and reproduce? This is, of course, answered by the variation that exists in a species. Individuals vary. Reproduction itself produces variation just by the process of reproduction because it's a manufacturing process and we always get variation in a manufacturing process. And because of genetic mixing, uh, the, the building of an organism is done based on a genetic structure and that genetic structure mixes elements, alleles, that describe how the new individual is going to be built. It's why sexual reproduction is a, is a better form of, uh, of reproduction because it does a better mixing function uh, of these alleles and this is why higher life forms, more complex life forms, generally uh, always have uh, sexual reproduction. Well, where does this uh, variation lead us? It, it leads us to different phenotype characteristics, different characteristics of the individual. A phenotype is all of the observable features of an individual. It's its body, its anatomic functions, the chemistry and how that chemistry works, and very importantly, the behavior of the organism. And all of the things in a phenotype act upon the environment and affect the survivability of the individual. The better characteristics in a phenotype gives higher chances of reproduction success. So to summarize this important basic idea, better survival characteristics leads to higher probability of survival, which is a measure of fitness. Fitness is measured by the potential number of offspring that can be produced and can be measured mathematically that way. And this leads to the most important equation uh, that uh, will be mentioned in this lecture and probably any lecture uh, I'll be given, which is the replication dynamics equation. And again, it's just like the population equations that we've seen early in this presentation, except with a very important point that the growth rate is set by fitness and only fitness. Uh, the growth rate is determined by how much better or how much worse a particular individual is relative to the average fitness in the entire population. And that can be seen in the remaining term uh, in the foil, shown in yellow here, uh, where f of x is the fitness of the individual and we subtract the average fitness of the population and then we form a rate of growth by dividing by the average fitness in the population. And this is the replication dynamics equation. We finally arrive at this system model, which is um, essentially a population going into a process of evolution and producing the next generation, generation n plus one. In that process, we have two key elements. One is replication based on fitness, and this is the replication dynamics uh, that we came up with on the previous slide. The second thing is the thing which determines what that fitness is going to be and this is of course through the competition that individuals have with one another. Competition in mathematical terms is the province of game theory and it was John Maynard Smith of Sussex University who had that really great insight um, in the early 60s and with the uh, mathematics of game theory uh, we get uh, some very significant insights uh, into um, the behavior of animals, the evolution of species, why there's altruism and even why there's human morality. And that's going to be the subject for the next lecture which is a lecture on game theory.